Nuts are a fantastic ingredient when you're talking about vegetarian food, and so today we're gonna focus in on walnuts. Three ways, two savory, one sweet, on today's episode of Southern Girl Meets Vegetarian Boy. This episode is brought to you by Diamond of California. Diamond has been around for over 100 years offering high quality, great tasting nuts for all occasions. Today is a celebration of all things nuts. It starts with taco filling. It's spicy, it's a crowd pleaser, it's my all time favorite walnut recipe. Then we're moving on, how about some walnut feta sliders, which are perfect for your vegetarian friends and a party, like tiny little burgers, how fun. We're gonna end the day with walnut banana upside down cake. It has caramel, it has bananas, it has crunchy little walnuts. It is to die for. So let's talk about taco filling. You need protein, and then what you really, really need is that old school flavor from the packet. So it starts with some oil. We're just gonna heat up our pan. Two to four tablespoons of oil. Just let it get nice and hot before you add in your onion. This is one onion, small diced. Give those a little stir. You're just looking for them to get nice and tender before you add in your walnuts. Normally I add a little bit of salt and pepper right now, but because we're using a taco filling, like the pre-made pack of taco seasoning, I wait to season this till the very end. Derek and I eat tacos at least once a week. Let that get tender. I think I'm gonna do crunchy tacos today. Or should I do soft tacos? I don't know, I can never decide. What's your favorite? Leave it in the comments below and while you're down there, why don't you just subscribe to this channel? Maybe throw us a little like. Ting! Thanks y'all. This is like Tuesday night taco night, right? Onions, nice and tender, they got a little bit of color on them and now let's add our walnuts. We need two cups of chopped walnuts. You do want them untoasted though. Today I'm gonna get all of the flavors for the taco from a pack of taco seasoning. You just pour that in. This has salt, it has garlic, it has onion powder, it has cumin, it has paprika, it has all the flavors that you think of as taco filling flavors, but I just had to get one packet. If you wanna make it yourself, feel free to do that. So the back of your taco seasoning package might say you need like two thirds of a cup to one cup of water, but I put in one and a half cups because the filling needs to cook a little bit longer. So put in a one and a half cups of water. It has a thickener in it. It's either tapioca or cornstarch. And what happens is as this cooks, it thickens it up. So you get that like saucy taco filling. I like a little extra heat. So I'm gonna use one tablespoon of chipotle chilies in adobo sauce. I just chop that all up. So this is gonna be spicy. It's gonna add a little extra heat. If you don't like things spicy, just leave this out. As these walnuts are simmering with the water, the oil, the chili, and adobo, and then also that taco seasoning, it's absorbing all that flavor, which is why we wanted untoasted walnuts. So all of that liquid is gonna get pulled into the interior of the walnut, and so we're gonna have that taco seasoning flavor inside of our walnut. And that, that's what we're looking for, y'all. It's still saucy, but it, it's like nice and thick. There's a, the like, almost like a gravy around all those walnuts. Let's give it a little taste. Mm. Let's put in a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. Let's build us a taco. And look at that. Can I eat this without it ending up on my shirt? It's the best yule. It tastes exactly like a classic taco. Mm. The walnuts are totally transformed here. They're nice and spicy and tender and chewy. You have all the flavorings from your taco seasonings. It is absolutely soul satisfying in the way that you want a taco to be. The filling is really the star here. Look at her. Hi everyone, I'm a taco. I've been transformed from walnuts into taco filling. Oh, you should be doing that. Why not? All right, so we made some tacos, but are you ready for something that is always perfect for a party? How about some walnut feta sliders? Okay, let's get this party started. In the house, in the house. That's right, in the house. Tonight, in the house. Walnut feta sliders. They're just what they sound like. 
They're sliders, but with a little walnut and feta patty. They're fun, they're delicious, they're salty. There's tons of, of interesting flavors in there, but it all starts again with our friend, the walnut. So for this recipe, you are gonna need to grind up your walnuts. So I'm using a food processor. If you don't have a food processor, that's okay. You can absolutely chop these. It just takes a lot longer. These are untoasted walnuts. You need a cup. The walnuts become the protein that you typically think of when you think of a burger patty. I have one cup of cooked brown rice. That also goes into our food processor. You want both of those things to get ground up into smaller little bite-sized pieces. So pulse. You don't wanna to blend too much because it will become walnut butter if you mix it up too much. We have the texture and it's like these little bitty nibblings, right? That's what you're looking for. They're like the size of rice chopped all up. I don't know, they're like chop, chop it up, okay? We wanna add in three quarters of a cup of refried beans. You can also just use mashed beans, but this saves me a step of doing the mashing. Those are really gonna act as our binder. We also wanna add in a quarter cup of breadcrumbs. We have 10 Kalamata olives, all chopped up. Those are just gonna be in there to add a nice umami salty punch. Two teaspoons of fresh dill. Dill goes a long way, y'all. Also no, whenever you're talking about fresh herbs, so I'm using two teaspoons of fresh dill, that is much less potent than dry dill. So if you're gonna use dry dill or dill pollen or dill seed, those are gonna pack a lot more of a punch and you put in a third less. Two teaspoons of minced onion, one half of a teaspoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of pepper. So at this point, every single thing that we put in here is vegan, right? Isn't that so fun? We don't have any eggs for a binding. We're really letting the beans do all the binding for us. And you'll see that this has a gorgeous texture. We're gonna add in a little bit of oil so we get the mouthfeel of, of like a burger, right? We need some fat in here. So there is some fat already because of the walnuts, but we want even more fat. We're gonna start with two tablespoons of oil. And then we're gonna throw in half a cup of feta. You can use vegan or traditional feta. And then we just fold. Then we patty and we cook them, y'all. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. Turn your pan on. I'm using a nonstick pan, put it to medium. So a little bit of oil, heat that up. And then let's portion some sliders. This is a two ounce portion scoop. I'm gonna make a heaping two ounce portion scoop and that should give me roughly 10-ish sliders. If you want a bigger burger, this will make four to five. They take longer to cook though. So we just get it and then we kind of patty them. Look at that little friend. I use these two fingers and my thumb to kind of create a flat side. And then I press with my palm and you get a perfect little slider. Hello friend, look how cute he is. Are you loving all these walnut recipes? If you are, please subscribe to our channel. Every single time we do a Southern Girl Meets Vegetarian Boy, we give you three recipes with any given ingredient. What? That's so fun, Damaris. I wanna be your best friend on your channel. Well, we're not currently taking applications for best friends, but when we do, we'll let you know to all those people subscribing. Once our pan's hot, we can start searing these, and they're only gonna cook for about five minutes per side. Patty your little baby's up. Look at him, beautiful. The cheese gets all melty and delicious. And we've all had a veggie burger that kind of squishes out everywhere. This one's nice and firm. And if you want them to hold even better, if you will refrigerate your patties after you've made them, they hold up even better. So if you want to take it to the grill, put them in the refrigerator first. Take it to the grill, take it to the grill, take it to the grill, take it to the boom. Look at them. So you have a nice sear, the interior is still tender. I think we're ready to make some sliders. I'm putting baby spinach and a red pepper topping out on these, but you can put whatever condiments you like. Let's try it. <gasps> Look at that. Walnut burger, feta cheese, spinach, topping out, little brioche bun. That's it, there's enough fattiness. There's all of the oils from the nuts plus the feta cheese inside of this already. So 
We don't even need any more condiments. We just need to eat. You ready to try? Let's take a big bite. Mm. That's delicious. So the inside of this burger is nice and tender, but the outside gets a beautiful crunch on those walnuts and on the rice. The dill is really coming through and it pairs very, very nicely with that feta and those Kalamata olives, which are nice and chewy and meaty inside of this burger. A roasted pickled flavor from our tapenade and then some spinach rounds out the whole thing. If I keep eating, I'm not gonna leave room for our walnut and banana upside down cake. That's the next thing we're making. One more recipe, this time we're going sweet. Let's do it. So we've made tacos and we've made sliders, but how about we take walnuts and transform them into something sweet with a walnut and banana upside down cake. It starts with a caramel sauce. Six tablespoons of butter and a half a cup of brown sugar. And a lot of times when I was a kiddo, we would just sprinkle the bottom of a pan with brown sugar and butter, and that would make the caramel as it baked. But if you want something more intense, if you want something even more richly caramel, then you start it in your pan and actually make a caramel sauce. Then that cools just a little bit and we add our bananas to that. And you can use any other fruit that you want. Apples are great in this, peaches are delightful, plums, apricots, all of those are gonna go beautifully with walnuts. So give it a stir as it's melting so that the sugars melt while the butter is also melting. You might have to give it a little whisk so that everything's homogenous. So it's gonna start bubbling. That bubbling's gonna be all the liquid evaporating from your butter. If you wanna make this vegan, just use a plant-based butter. And then if you get some real caramelization separation, you're gonna whisk it back together. Didn't that sound like a song? Caramelization separation. Caramelization separation. What? Caramelization separation. Huh? Caramelization separation. Okay, so look at this. The liquid's evaporating from the butter, which is creating all of these little bubbles. Your nose knows when caramel is happening, right? You can smell that deepening sugar, cooking sugar smell. You see all that dark color there? That's what you want. We're done. Turn off your heat and whisk. See how it's becoming caramel sauce right before your very eyes? You just gotta whisk it for a second. Looky there, caramel sauce. This is so, so hot. You have to cool that down before you put your bananas in or else they just, they like cook away. Preheat your oven to 350 and let's make that batter. To build this cake, we're gonna start with all of our wet ingredients and then we're gonna fold in our dry ingredients. It's very, very simple. We just start with three quarters of a cup of sugar, two eggs, one cup of sour cream. You could also use yogurt, that would be fine. If you didn't have sour cream, you could also use milk. Um, and any of the plant-based baking products will also work. So a plant-based sour cream and egg replacers will 100% work in this recipe. Half a cup of oil, you can use vegetable, canola, coconut oil, any of those will work. And then two teaspoons of rum extract. If you don't have rum extract, you could use rum. Now give this a little stir. Right now, okay, these are all of our liquids, right? So now we're gonna talk about our dry ingredient. We have one and a half cups of flour, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder, Three quarters of a teaspoon of fine salt. You want fine salt so it evenly distributes in your dough. Give this a little whisk just so your dry ingredients are combined and then those go into your wet ingredients. And then you don't want to over mix. You'll end up with tunneling, which are those like big, long holes inside of your cake from overworking. It just means that you've developed too much of the gluten and it's, it's like a little denser. Like this right now still looks a little chunky but when it's mixed properly, it'll get this like smoothness to it where everything's homogenous, you're ready to go. So you haven't overworked, but you've developed enough gluten that there's some structure to your cake. Now, half a cup of our diamond walnuts go into the caramel. So just so like it's on top of the cake and then one cup of those walnuts will go into the batter. So we get walnuts in every single bite. So look, I'm just folding those in real gently and it doesn't take very much to mix them in. And now we cut up our bananas. You wanna kind of cut it this way so that the two halves are mirror images of each other, right? So you just kind of slide your knife along there, boop, and you have identical bananas. They're actually not identical. They're mirror image bananas. Then that cut side goes into your pan. You put them right in the center, 
and then lay your next banana in there. Our bananas are gonna cook in that caramel, so they're gonna be nice and sweet and tender. And then the diamond walnuts are gonna give us this beautiful crunch, a ton of texture on the top of our cake. Now, our batter goes on top of those bananas. Put it in gently so you don't move your bananas all around. Okay. And then just gently kind of encourage the batter to the edges. And y'all, we are ready to bake this little meh ma jamma. Bake this at 350 degrees until the center is set about 45 minutes. You all, she smells so good. Let that cool for 15 to 20 minutes before you turn it out. Release it from the pan. And then really you got one shot at this, y'all, so make it count. Your board on top, one, two, three. You should hear it release. The moment of truth. I'm gonna let you all see it before me. One, two, three. Huh? You all, she's beautiful. Look at this little angel. Hello, hello, hello. All of those walnuts, all of that caramel, all of that delicious banana goodness. Let's try a little bite because this smells heavenly. The rum and the bananas with the walnut those should always be together. Because the cake itself is not too, too sweet, it's really letting those walnuts shine. And then you have all this buttery caramel flavor and then the cooked bananas. The rum is really bumping up that banana foster flavor. So a little bit of cooked bananas, caramel, rum, and then those gorgeous floral walnuts and a soft buttery crumb. That is delicious. The walnuts inside of the cake make it. I promised you walnuts three ways and I delivered walnuts three ways. Completely different recipes, all delicious, all fast, and all super tasty. It started out with that walnut taco filling. It's spicy, it's smoky, it's so fun on a Tuesday night. We moved on to walnut feta sliders which are fun and fast, tons of protein, tons and tons of flavor, and then we finished the day with a walnut and banana upside down cake. I love every one of these recipes. I don't know what you're still doing watching YouTube. You should get in the kitchen and make at least one of these. And thank you again, Diamond of California, for sponsoring this episode and being such a great partner. And I'll see you next time on Southern Girl Meets Vegetarian Boy. Big finish. At first it comes together and it looks kinda chunky. That's not what we're looking for. But keep on whisking and then you'll see it. It's caramel at your door.